QLC Plus all about the audio trigger widget. So QLC Plus has an audio trigger widget which you can use on the virtual console page. And this can be used to control DMX info going to specific channels. It can be used to control scenes. And it can also be used to interact with other widgets on the virtual console. So let's take a look here first by going to my inputs and outputs tab. And we're going to go to the audio tab up at the top. And in my case, I'm just using a USB microphone input for my demonstration here. You can also use your default device. So if you're playing back music, I could use that as the input device and it would react to the music. We have some other choices down the bottom. As far as the sample rate goes, we have an adjustable sample rate. There are channels we can do mono and stereo, although the audio trigger widget itself only operates in mono mode. It doesn't have two channels. But if you select stereo, then you're going to be sending both the left and right signals into the widget. So that might be a better thing to do if you're actually having the widget react to a stereo audio file that you're playing back. For my purposes here, I'm just using a microphone, so I'm going to leave it on mono. Now I can also double check by pressing this to make sure that I have a working signal. And as you can see, as I'm speaking, I am getting audio signal into QLC+. So that's a good thing. It looks like we're ready to go. Let's go over to the Virtual Console page now. So I'm going to install the Audio Trigger widget right on the main screen here. I recommend not putting it in a solo frame because it works like an additional solo button if you do that and it cancels out any other buttons that you might have there. So the best use of this widget is to make sure that it's just on the main screen somewhere but not in a solo frame. You might have some unusual results happening if you do that. So I'll click on the main screen. I'll put my audio trigger widget in here. Now a couple things, like any other widget in QLC Plus, by double clicking on it, we get to set some of the preferences. I'm going to name this Audio Trigger. One of the next things we get to do is choose how many spectrum bars it has. By default, it starts up with 16 different audio spectrum bars, ranging from 0 Hz up to 5 kHz. So you could have, theoretically, 16 different audio signals controlling 16 different sets of lights or something like that in your setup. For my purposes, I'm going to reduce this down and keep it simpler. I'm going to reduce this down to just six channels. So now we can see that I have 0 to 883 hertz or 833 hertz, and I'm going to use that particular audio spectrum here. Now, before I start to do that, you'll notice that there is an input tab. This input tab doesn't have anything to do with the audio. It has to do whether you're going to use a MIDI signal to turn this audio trigger widget on or off, or if you're just going to use a key press. This particular widget, in default mode, it is turned off. So when you go into run mode, you actually have to turn this widget on for it to function as part of your setup. So I'm not going to do a MIDI signal for right now, but I will put in a key press. So I'm going to say that Shift A is going to be my key press combination that I'm going to use to turn this widget on and off. So now I can see if I go into run mode, I'm not getting any audio signal in here. So I can either click up here to turn it on, and now you can see that I have audio signal coming in. Or I can use my Shift A key, and that turns it on, or Shift A key again, and now this turns it off. When it's turned on, you can see that I have my audio signal coming in. This fader over here will adjust the strength of the audio signal coming in. So as you can see, as I bring this down, it's reducing the sensitivity. And as I bring it back up, it's becoming more sensitive to my microphone. So you can see my, it coming, the signal from my microphone coming in. I'm going to leave it about there because that looks like I have real good sensitivity right there. Now I'll turn it back off for a moment. Go out of run mode. Double click and let's go back in and see what we're going to do. You can use the volume bar to trigger events, or you can use any of the frequency bars. I'm just going to take this number one frequency bar and use that. When I click on here, I get three choices. I can use this to control some DMX channels. I can use this to control a function, or I can use this to control a virtual console widget. 
Let's try the DMX channels to start with. And right now it'll say zero channels, which meaning I'm not controlling any channels right at the moment. I'll click here. It brings up all of the fixtures in my current setup. Now I can select what particular channels are going to be affected by this spectrum bar. So first of all, down here, I'm going to click apply changes to fixtures of the same type. I'm going to go into my slim par and, and select red and also dimmer. So now my audio signal is going to control the DMX signal going to the red and to the dimmer parts of those lights. And since I click this box, I'm going to be controlling all eight of my slim pars. And I'm going to say, OK. All right, I'm going to close this up. Let me bring up my monitor for a moment. So here's our eight slim pars. And we'll go into run mode and we'll turn this on. Now you can see as I'm talking, as this bar is coming up, it's turning these pars on and off. I'm going to try to just sing a tone here so you can see that it's the strength of the signal acts like a fader control as to how far up those faders go. So it controls the red intensity and it's going to be also controlling the dimmer intensity. And I'll try to do that. Um. So you can see as I adjust the intensity of the, my signal that it's actually controlling the intensity of the red and the intensity of the dimmer channel on those. The audio signal actually becomes like an intensity control. But it actually can control any channel on the light. So you can try some experimentation there as far as what you want to do. If you want to have it control like a color wheel and going to different colors or a gobo wheel so the audio can change the gobo wheel to different gobos throughout and that's always a possibility. The strength of the audio signal directly translates over to the DMX signal whether it's from 0 to 255 and where that's going to end up at. Alright, let's go out of run mode for a minute. Let's take a look at another option here going to double click and let's select function here. And when we go to function, it says no function. So we can control a function. I can click here and I can select a function like par pink and say OK. So now this is going to bring up that particular function if that frequency is detected. We also get a chance here to do disable and enable. So I'm going to reduce the disable down to about 10% and I'm going to uh, change the enable to about 20%. So basically I'm saying if the audio signal falls below 10%, do not do anything. Do not activate the function. If the audio signal is above 20%, then yes, activate the function. Okay. So let me say that again. The disable threshold if I set this to 10%, I'm saying if the audio signal is below 10%, don't activate the function. If it's above 20%, yes, activate the function. This is something that you might want to experiment around. If you find that the lights are, are too sensitive to the audio signals, then you could increase this, for instance, to 20% and maybe make this more like 30%. So it's going to be a little less sensitive. How you set that up and what works best for you will depend on what you find as you experiment. So let's try this now. I'll go back in run mode. We'll turn this on. So when I get strong enough signal, boom, 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 boom. And notice that this is a simple on and off. It doesn't do intensity. So again, if we exceed that signal, and you'll notice that when I'm not talking, I do have a little bit of an audio signal down here, but it's not enough to trigger that. That's the idea of that threshold. But if I exceed the 30%, which I am when I'm talking, it activates that particular function and brings that function up. Okay, let's go out of run mode and try something else. Probably the best use of the audio trigger widget is to control the speed of chases or sequences. So that's what we're going to do next here. We're going to have the audio trigger widget 
interact with this speed control down here, which controls the speed of my sequences or chases that I'm putting up on the screen. So let's just show you what's happening with those. I'm going to go to run mode, and I have a busking setup here where I do some different chases and scene or sequences with my PAR lights up here. For example, I can do red, green, all, or red, green, front to back, or red, green, left to right, or red, yellow, left to right. So I have a bunch of selections that I can use if I'm busking or doing uh, on the fly lighting for a performance, or if I was DJing and I wanted to have uh, some different lighting scenarios that I could use. And then these are solid colors down here that I can call up. Now, the speed of these particular sequences is controlled by my speed button down here. So either by rotating the dial or tapping, I can change the speed. I just tapped a little quicker here. Now I'm at 280 or I can tap slower. So now it's going to go much, much slower. Then also I have a divisor bar down here. So by clicking here, I'm going to increase the time to twice as long or four times as long. So you'll notice that my sequence is slowed down over here. Or I can go back to one. So I'm operating at 730 milliseconds. Or I can chop that in half, and you'll notice that the sequence speeds up. Or I can chop that into quarters, sequence getting faster, or into eighths. Now it's getting very, very fast. All right. So those are my divisors down here that I can change. I can increase the divisor or decrease the divisor. So I can change the speed of that. So if I have a piece of audio that's, say, running at 120, I can increase the divisor to two times, so it's going to slow that down. So instead of flashing at 120, it's going to flash at 60. Okay, it's going to lengthen that amount of time. Or I can cut that in half, and now it's going to flash at 240 if I was doing that. But I'm just going to leave it set at one time for the time being here. And we'll show you how the audio trigger can affect that. Let's go into the audio trigger. And this time we're going to select Virtual Console Widget. No widget selected, so now I click on this and I have all of my buttons that are displayed over here. But I'm going to go to the Speed Dial function and say OK. So now my audio signal coming in is going to control this speed dial and it's going to set it. So it's basically going to set it, if I'm using this for instance, as my, uh, to pick up the bass frequency. I'm hoping that my bass drum pulse on the beat is going to help set this particular audio frequency band and set the beats per minute for the particular piece of music that I'm uh, using here. So I'm going to kind of beatbox in here to show you how this goes. We're going to leave my duration set at 20, and I'll set this. So I have it set at 29 here. I'll set it at 30%. Okay, so now we'll go to run mode. And we'll turn on my red-green, let's say red-green left to right, so you can see this. And turn on my audio trigger. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so you can see my me changing the pulse of that particular audio signal coming in. It's exactly down here changing the speeds that my lights are running at. And then I can use my divisors to make them run faster or make them run slower. But it's basically being set by this particular audio channel information that's coming in here, okay? And the intensity of that audio channel. So this is probably the best use of this audio widget. I think most DJs are trying to get the lighting to synchronize with the pulse of the music. And this is how you would do that to get this to synchronize with the pulse of the music. So hopefully you find this helpful and you can use it in your setup. 
uh, some way to enhance what you're doing, whether you're uh, doing some DJing or whether you're doing some lighting on the fly uh, for a particular concert or that.